Hey loves, welcome back. So I'm going to be showing you guys how I installed this unit and also a look I did just to complete the look. So I got this hair from Friday Night Hair and I spent about $50 on it. It came in about 3-4 to four days through Priority Mail. It came in a regular plastic bag and a kitchen lady net. And then the company will send you an informational card just telling you about their brand and what they offer. And then they also attach some wig tape to it. I did not use the wig tape. I don't prefer to use it at all but you can to each his own so i'm going to show you how my hair looks underneath i did apply a wig cap and put some foundation on it as close to my skin color so that way the lace will melt into it and this is how the wig looks this wig does have a clip in the back and two clips on the side where your temple is and also an adjustable strap also you guys just to give you a heads up, if you have a bigger size head like me, this wig will not necessarily fit all the way. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a few minutes. But first, I'm going to start off by cutting off my lace first. Whenever you cut your lace off, you want to get it as close to your hairline as possible. So that way, whenever you go to do your baby hairs, it just looks a lot more natural. Smoke your weed on the star projectors. I guess we'll never know what Harvard gets us. But seeing my family have it all. This hair was really soft and the curls was really cute. And also the hair color, it's not just like red. It has like other colors in them. So I think that really makes the wig pop more. Just to see the looks on all their faces. All it took was patience. I got a lot of friends to come up off the strip for me. The same and so I'm just showing you how the hairline looks before I tweak it. So I want to go in with this got to be free spray. And I only applied this to my to the size of my head. I just did it because it's a quicker way of laying my wig down. And also where like the forehead area of mine, I didn't apply any product to it. But once I put down my baby hairs, it was secure and it was holding. Whenever you dry your adhesive or your gel, you want to use a cool setting. You don't want to use a high heat setting because it'll only just melt your product out and also try using like a small baby tooth comb or lightly tap your finger so that way the lace will melt into it because if you rub it it will just create build up and look cakey on your lace alcohol and i'm just going to clean up my hairline wherever i got some extra product at and then also going back to how i said the wig cap was too big for my head this is when the alcohol comes into play so I'm going to take that Q-tip and I'm going to use some alcohol and take off the extra wig cap that I have on the side of my face on each side. And I'm going to cut off that excess cap. So here I'm just making sure that it's adjusted to my head correctly and that my parting space is okay before I move on to the next steps. I would prefer you use like a comb that has like a metal end or something to make sure that your part is more precise, but this did the job for the day. <laughs> so you're going to need a tweezer, some scissors, a razor, a toothbrush, or a baby hair brush, whatever you want to call it, a comb, and also some gel. So I took out a little bit of my hairline and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take little small sections and start pulling it out. I did this instead of using the tweezers so it'll be a little bit faster. Also you guys, this wig has hard lace so that means it's more so like plastic. So when you're pulling out the smaller pieces, it's not as sensitive to ripping any holes in your head into your lace, I mean, than like a regular lace would. So from here on, you're going to take smaller sections and you're going to apply some gel to your hairline area and you're going to get some razors or scissors or shears and you're going to go in an up and down motion and get your toothbrush or your edge brush and just start creating your baby hairs. Now I'm going to show you guys how I created a sideburn look. So what I did was, since I said before, like this wig was a little bit smaller than my actual head size, I took out the hairline by my ear and I'm just going to do the same thing that I did before. And I'm going to cut it with some scissors and then swoop it like a hairline. So this is how it looks. And I kind of masked the fact that it didn't fit my head. So this is how it looks on both sides. I did the other side off camera. And now I'm just going to take down my hair and see how I like it.
And I'm just making sure that my part is perfect enough and getting it to how I want it to look. The hair does snag quite a bit a little bit, but it's more so just on the ends. But I also clipped it, so I feel like that's probably why it caused a little bit of snagging in the front area on my ends. So this is me just showing you how the hair looks on me. And it actually looks really good. Like, it looks like it's my hair. <laughs> And it does have a lot of volume as well. So I'm just showing you how it looks as a middle part and on both sides. You can really style it however you want. You can even do a half up, half down look as well. So I am 5'3", and this hair is extremely long. It said it was like 26 inches, but I honestly think it was a lot more than that. It stopped about halfway down my butt. So the hair was like super long. And I did kind of like pre-cut some layers into it. So if you wanted to like go back in and add more layers, you could. Or make it all one, one length, you could as well. So now I'm going to take this curling wand. I set it to 330. And I'm just going to use this to flatten out the top of my head. And I'm also going to use it in the front area to make it look a little bit more natural. So this is how it looks after I flatten out both sides. And I'm just going to make sure that the back is flattened out a little bit. And yeah. Also, you guys, don't take the curling wand too far down from your head, like the top of your head, because it will like flatten out the curls, if that makes sense. So I only stopped about half an inch from my um, from the top of my head. See how it looks like my hair? I think I did pretty good. <laughs> but I was just smoothing out the sides of my hair so it's not like extremely bulky right there. So now I'm gonna go on with makeup. I'm gonna start off by priming and moisturizing my face. And this is a must because it will help protect your skin in a way and also just act as a barrier for a smooth application when you go on to put on your foundation i'm going to go on with this elf cosmetics highlight and contour cream palette and i'm going to use that yellow and medium brown shade to cover up a few acne marks that i have on my face i do have a whole video on how how to get a full like natural everyday glowy look on my channel as well so if you guys would like to see that just go ahead and click on it i have the link in the description box take this flat fluffy brush and I'm just gonna blend out my foundation I mean sorry not my foundation blend out the concealer that I just put down and now I'm gonna go in with this L'Oreal infallible mount foundation I'm in a shade 109 and I'm using a silicone beauty blender to blend out the product on my face So now I'm highlighting my face. I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Concealer in the shade 3.5. I highlight underneath my eyes, down the bridge of my nose, my forehead, my chin, and also I highlight where my contour will be just so it gives me a more defined look. So now I'm going to go in with e.l.f. Cosmetics Highlighting Contour Cream Palette and I'm going to use the darkest brown shade to contour my face. Starting where my jawline area is, my cheekbones, and my forehead. And I also contour my nose and my cupid's bow area. So this is me going in with my beauty blender and blending it out more just to make sure that everything is nice and seamless and blends in together well. And I'm also going to take a fluffy brush and blend it out a little bit. Going in with this Bobbi Brown highlighting stick and I'm going to highlight my face. And I believe this is a shade Nude Beach. And I just highlighted my cheekbones, my nose, the tip of my nose, my forehead, and my upper lip area. Basically set my whole face off camera. And I just focused on the eyeshadow next. So I'm going to go on with this Jaclyn Hill palette from Morphe. And I'm going to use the palette called Bling Boss. And I'm going to use the shade Hush Hush to act as a transition shade. And I actually ended up not liking how it looked. 
So I ended up going in with the Juvia's Place, the Saharan palette, and I used the shade Jamalia. <laughs> I probably said that wrong, but I used to say Gemalia, which is like an orangey shade to go over it with. Weed on the star I went back in with that palette and I used the shade Sokoto. And it's just a brighter orange shade. And I put it on top of Gemalia so that way it would pop more. And I'm just blending out the edges of it so it's blended and not any harsh lines. Then I'm going to go in with the Juvia's Place, the Saharan 2 palette. And these don't have any names, so I just took the burgundy and the orange muted color. And I'm placing that, and I'm placing that on the outer corners of my eye to create a depth effect. I didn't realize that the way I had my camera positioned, it wasn't necessarily showing how I did the eyeshadow all the way. So hopefully you guys can see what I did and it helps from the angle that I got it at here. So I went in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Concealer again and I just cut my crease. Here I'm just showing you how I blend out the corners of it before I actually like set my eye or place a color on top of that concealer. And I'm going to use this NYX pigment and also this MAC pigment. I can't remember the names, but one is like a, a baby pink color with a little bit of lavender mixed in. And then the other one is like a deep burgundy or red color. So I'm placing a lighter shade all over my lid. And then on the very outer corner, I'm going to place that darker pigmentation there. You will get some fallout, so it's nice to have a fluffy brush around just so you can kind of wipe it off. You don't want to sweep it hard. You want to lightly sweep it off so that way it doesn't smear on your face. And so I'm just touching it up a little bit more, adding a little bit more product so it looks a lot more opaque. And now I'm going to go in with a darker pigment, and I'm just going to place it on the outer corner and blend it inward. The Haran 2 palette and I'm adding a little bit more of the red color so it can be a little bit more deeper. I feel like it kind of got faded out. I kind of skipped a little bit through my brows, but I just used the Anastasia's Dip Brow in the shade Dark Chocolate and an angle brush eyebrow pencil I mean eyebrow brush so now I'm just adding some highlight on my brow bone area and in my tear duct for my lip combo I use NYX downtown beauty lip liner and then I use the NYX duo chrome lipstick you can actually leave your lip how it looks after I did this, but I then applied the ColourPop liquid lipstick in the shade Times Square over it. I use the Duochrome as a base because it kind of gives it like a gloss look without you actually having gloss on. And this is me just blending my lip out. And I apply my lashes off camera. So, and I also added some eyeshadow as well underneath my eyes. So this is how the look is looking and this is the completed look you guys thank you so much for watching if you guys like to see more videos like this or something new just let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel thank you